This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Tuesday's primary election results could be a concern for the presidential candidates. President Biden and Donald Trump won in landslides, with more than 47,000 Democrats voted uninstructed, and 120,000 Republicans voted for someone other than Trump. Wisconsin will be a decisive state in November. Biden carried the state by less than 1% in 2020. Donald Trump is calling migrants animals and other disparaging names again, most recently on the campaign trail in Green Bay Tuesday. Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. Trump also calls the influx of migrants at the border a bloodbath. The Biden campaign says Trump is embracing political violence. Recent furloughs in the Marshfield Clinic health system will be permanent. Marshfield Clinic is telling employees that those who are furloughed in January will no longer be employed by May 4th. The furloughs account for 3% of Marshfield Clinic's workforce. It's been one year on the job for Wisconsin's Secretary of State. Sarah Godlewski says her office authenticates 15,000 documents each year for all kinds of Wisconsinites. You know, a family that finally heard that they can adopt a child in Thailand or a business. My first one was a cheese shop that finally got to sell their cheese overseas. But Godlewski tells Up North News the office has had to do more with less since it was defunded and downsized nine years ago. The legislature has been so extreme that they've basically defunded this constitutional office at the detriment of Wisconsin. The office authenticates 15,000 documents a year for things like international business and adoptions. Nearly 3,000 students in Wisconsin will get advanced manufacturing training for high-demand jobs with grants from the Wisconsin Fast Forward program. 17 school districts will train students for careers like robotics, 3D printing, and drones. The half million dollars in state grants will reimburse schools for costs. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The city of Mellon will soon no longer have its own police force. The Mellon City Council voted to abolish the police department on Tuesday, an expected move considering the department has only one officer. Instead of building up its own department, the city will contract the Ashland County Sheriff's Office to patrol the community and respond to emergencies. The Ashland County Sheriff's Office says their contract is a prioritized contract, which is the only such contract they have with any city. The Superior School District has announced they will be laying off 40 more staff members. The staff members, mostly paraprofessionals, were notified of the layoffs this week. The school district announced that 25 teachers would also be laid off last month. School officials say declining enrollment, inflation, and the loss of federal funding are the reasons for the cuts, as the district is facing a $4.5 million deficit in next year's budget. The school district will also be closing Lake Superior Elementary School this summer. The University of Wisconsin-Superior has announced construction is finally set to begin on a new stadium. Construction crews will begin work on the Superior Choice Credit Union Stadium on April 15th after about a year of weather and price change delays. The total cost of the project is now expected to cost $7 million as opposed to the original $5 million. When completed, the Turf Field Stadium will host the school's men's and women's soccer teams and the men's and women's outdoor track and field teams. The Superior City Council voted against holding a public hearing on the Namaji Trail Energy Center project on Wednesday. Minnesota Power, the company behind the Energy Center project, has made a number of requests of the Planning Commission, including to reopen the city's comprehensive plan. The denials triggered a resolution for the City Council to hold a public meeting, but the motion was denied by the Council. Superior residents have expressed strong opinions both for and against the Energy Center project. The Lake Superior Violent Offender Task Force and other Northland law enforcement agencies have announced eight people were indicted on drug charges. According to a press release, seven individuals from Chicago and one from Duluth were charged with conspiracy to distribute fentanyl and meth. Law enforcement officials say over the course of their investigation, they recovered massive quantities of fentanyl and meth from the group, which is accused of conspiring to distribute the drugs throughout the Twin Ports area. 
Following comments about Mayor Roger Reinhart, quote, peeing in his Cheerios from billionaire Kathy Cargo, the Duluth area began the Cheerio Challenge to donate to food shelves in the area. About a week later, local nonprofits have announced that they've received more than 800 boxes of Cheerios through donations, as well as the impressive sum of $50,000 from local residents. Officials say they didn't expect the comments to lead to such grand donations, but they're thankful for the community's generosity. City of Ashland residents voted to narrowly approve a resolution to improve the Vaughn Public Library on Tuesday. 1,067 residents voted in favor of the $4.3 million bond to renovate the library, including the bathrooms and getting the heating and cooling system up to code. 929 residents voted against the measure. With the passage of the referendum, property taxes on $100,000 homes will increase by $18 for the next two years and $36 for the following 18. Staff at a youth support service in Duluth walked out on the job last week over conflicts with the new owners. According to a Northern News Now report, Neighborhood Youth Services has been providing neighborhood kids with meals and services for nearly 30 years before the nonprofit that ran the service went bankrupt. The service was then absorbed by the Family Freedom Center in 2022. NYS employees accused the new owners of trying to run the service as a business and called for the center to release control of NYS. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Bucks lose at home. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Bucks lost to the Memphis Grizzlies last night, 111 to 101. The Bucks now 29 and 9 at Pfizer Forum this year. Doc Rivers says he became increasingly concerned about Giannis Antetokounmpo's sore hamstring injury as the game wore on. Uh, everyone said he's good. Uh, and Giannis said he was good after the game, so uh, it was just visible what you saw and so you know I'm protective in that way for right now unless we have what eight games seven games we, we want to be right and healthy and that's more important than, than winning and losing right now baseball the brewers have today off after losing to the twins yesterday seven to three it was the first game in nearly three years for starting pitcher joe ross following two tommy john surgeries pat murphy joe will tell you he didn't throw his best but he competed and i love what i saw because i mean to go out there and he hadn't started a baseball game in major league since 2021 and has had you know a track record of of tough injuries to get back on the hill and compete against a good ball club you know a lot of today is the minnesota twins they hit in the clutch and they they took seven walks which is unacceptable on our part um and you know they hit when they needed to that's brewers manager pat murphy with sports i'm mike clemens on your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Not that it's any big surprise, but Joker 2, Foley Adieu, has received an R rating due to strong language, violence, sexuality, and brief full nudity. The Motion Picture Association deems full nudity, albeit brief, much more offensive than malingering partial nudity. However, it does make it easier for kids under 17 that sneak into the film to be alert so they don't miss it. The film stars Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. The first Joker grossed $1 billion worldwide. Joker 2 is set for release October 4th. Speaking of brief full nudity, Steve-O refused to appear on Bill Maher's podcast Club Random because Maher said he wouldn't not smoke pot. Double negatives aside, the star of Jackass, whose real name is Stephen Gilchrist Glover, has been sober going on 16 years and was ready to say yes until Maher said him not smoking on the podcast was a deal breaker. If you're looking for something old that's new to watch, here's one of Pete's retro picks. Check out The Larry Sanders Show from the early 90s. The late Gary Shandling plays the title character, who hosts a Tonight Show-esque late-night talk show. It's a realistic and hilariously funny look behind the scenes that captures the chaos of a nightly talker. The show also stars Rip Torn and Jeffrey Tambor, and you can find it on HBO. During Disney's annual shareholder meeting, CEO Bob Iger shot down the idea that NBC Universal's Epic Universe will steal visitors from Disney's turf in Orlando, Florida. Iger also said Disney is entertaining the idea of a new avatar area of Disneyland. I know what you're thinking, and yes, you might have to wait in line for well over an hour to see the Avatar attraction, but that is still a fraction of the time we spent sitting in theaters watching the actual movie. Forbes has released its 2024 billionaires list, and Taylor Swift is on it for the first time. Forbes credits her song catalog, tours, and real estate portfolio for the income boost. The New York Post reports that the 34-year-old Swift is now one of about 2,700 people who are worth over $14 trillion collectively. Another newcomer to this year's list of billionaires is Magic Johnson, who made his money investing in professional sports, Starbucks, and real estate. You know who didn't make the list? Me. 
and Jennifer Lopez, who due to low ticket sales has rebranded her current tour. It started out as the This Is Me Now tour, but has been changed to the This Is Me Live Greatest Hits tour. Yahoo News reports this is a reflection of weak sales from Lopez's new album. When experiencing low ticket sales, always make it a Greatest Hits tour, or even better, just sing Taylor Swift songs. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly cloudy early on with gradual clearing as we head through the afternoon. Our high today, 46. Still a little breezy, but not as windy. North wind at 15 to 20, maybe an occasional gust to 25. Tonight, clear 27. Tomorrow, sunshine 50. By Saturday, sunny with a high of 54. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Right now, it's 34. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.